the 7 and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive, part 61, fitting the saddle tank loosely in place to mark the positions of the bolts on the front support, plus making a special fitting for the balancing pipe. What you're looking at at the moment is the inside view of the filler cap assembly. This has been made using a substantial casting obtained from the same place you would get any parts for a Sweet William, Blackgate's Engineering. In a future episode you will see how I utilise a couple of bolts around the edge of this to support the pipe, returning the water to the tank from the bypass valve of the axle pump. I need to make a cap for the water filler at the top of the saddle tank, but I didn't have a piece of brass the right size, but thankfully the customer, the man who owns the engine, did and sent me this. And the good news is it's longer than required, so if I make a mistake, I can have a couple of attempts or maybe three attempts at making a really nice cap for the top of the tank. A few years ago, I dropped a heavy steam cylinder on my toe and it's never been the same since. So I've learned that with heavy pieces of metal, put them in a box so they can't be knocked off the bench accidentally onto your toe. Believe me, it really was painful and made my eyes water and the toenail no longer grows properly. The time has finally arrived to mark the bolt positions for the saddle tank, and to do this I need to bolt it in position on the cab, and in turn the cab needs to be accurately positioned on the foot plate. The packing is in place, and I have a long bolt that goes through the hole. It is most important that the cab is in the correct position. In this clip, I'm fixing the saddle tank to the cab using one nut at each side. The next couple of clips are very difficult to film, because I'm in the way. What I'm attempting to do is mark the positions of the holes that are in the uprights on the saddle tank itself. This job was trickier than I thought it was going to be, but eventually I managed to mark the positions, but I'm going to do it twice, because I do not want to get this part of the job wrong. It looks slightly wrong in this image, but that's because of the camera angle. The tank is perfectly level on top of the boiler and an equal distance from the frames at both sides. I'm going to leave it there with the saddle tank. I'll leave it in position because I need some bench space for what I'm doing tomorrow. The balancing pipe is a perfect fit in the fittings that I made. But after I've made this next part, I do need to cut this balancing pipe. I need to find the center and here it is. What I'm about to do is make a centre fitting for the balancing pipe to do three things. Provide water to the axle pump, provide water to the hand pump, and also to fit a globe valve for draining the tank. This is a piece of cast gun metal and it's not square, but it's going to look okay for this application. It's sort of, not triangular, but tapered at each side. Even though it's not perfectly square, it's quite a good fit in the four-jaw self-centering chuck of my Smart and Brown lathe, which is what I'm using for the turning operations. After facing across the front, I'm now longitudinally turning it, part of the way down to just make it look something. I didn't want it to look like a random block fitted onto the pipe. It is, of course, a random block that will fit on the pipe, but it will look slightly better by turning this register one at each side. Eventually the part will be silver soldered, so I need to drill a hole through the centre, starting with a centre drill to take the pipe. The copper pipe is 3 8 of an inch in diameter and the twist drill bit, not unsurprisingly, is also 3 8 of an inch in diameter. This is a standard 3 8 of an inch drill bit and it's grabbing the gun metal badly. After a while it settles down though and I drill the hole half of the way through. I'm not going all the way through in case the drill wanders. It won't look very good when it's silver soldered onto the pipe. I'm using the video editor to speed up this part of the operation, just to shorten the length of the video and get through the job in a reasonable time. Here I'm machining the register on the other end. I'm making the register to no specific size, but it's the same size as the one at the other end, because I did take note of the graduations on the hand wheel. And now exactly the same procedure, centre drill followed by twist drill. The twist drill meets in the middle and there's now a hole through this part. 
What I propose to do is fit two unions like this. I generally use unions because if the threads get chewed up they can be easily changed. And here is the part marked out ready for drilling. I didn't bother showing the drilling operation, it was a very routine job and here you see the end product after I cleaned it up on my 4 inch belt sander. Before removing the part from the machine vise on the drilling machine, I inserted a taper tap whilst it was still in the drilling machine and threaded the holes. By doing it this way, it ensures that the threads are accurate and at 90 degrees to the block. If you look carefully at this image, you can see that the block is not perfectly square. It tapers, but the holes for the fittings are drilled and threaded on the parallel sides. Here you see a test fitting of the steam unions, and it looks quite good. Although the single fitting will be replaced by a globe valve. In this clip I'm checking the fit of the hole on a piece of 3 8 copper pipe, and it's a good fit. This is not the balancing pipe. Here is a balancing pipe, marked with a felt tip pen to show me where I need to cut it on the bandsaw. Once I cut the part on the bandsaw, I will then push the ends of the pipe into the fitting and re-measure it. I'll show you that in a moment. Here's a general idea, but I don't know how far to press the balancing pipes into the fitting. There is a simple answer. I made some marks on the balancing pipe using a felt tip pen. These are the external positions for the pipe. The next thing to do is to use the tape measure in exactly the same way as I did previously before I cut the pipe. It is 14 inches to the outside edge of the pipe. And here is a clip from the last episode showing me measuring the part twice. Applying the logic, measure twice and then you only cut once. And that is it for this episode. As always, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.